at the UCC, you do not have to sign a stamp signature or a typed up signature is considered signed under the UCC. So when you get a letter in the mail and it has no signature, um, or it just have a stamp signature, then it is considered signed. The UCC is very, very important for people to learn about what's going on with their lives because we are on the contract law, no other law. There is no law at all. In America, the court system is operated under military. When you walk into a courtroom, I don't, I don't care which courtroom, if it's a higher court or a lower court, they're under the military. Now you're walking in there and you're not a military member and you're not told that you've been tried under the military. If you mention the Constitution, the judge says it does not apply in my courtroom. But you don't know what he's saying because you don't know what they're doing to you when you're there. And all of that language is designed to confuse the hell out of you? Yes, it's designed under the UCC and they know. They know what they're doing and they know how to uh, manipulate you. So you're saying all judges are very schooled and versed in UCC? Yes. They're taken to special training yes. schools in order to learn this? Yeah, they, the president appoints all the federal judges in America. And, he, and they go to Scottsdale, Arizona and Reno, Nevada to train how to apply this fraud contract in the courtroom. And in the United Kingdom? The United Kingdom. Majority of the judges here in the United Kingdom are not judges. They're just doing business. They might be a retired lawyer. They're doing business as judge. And That's so for judges in, in Malawi and in Canada? All of them, exactly the same system. They're under the UCC. Okay, you try to go and, 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 and discover your own birth bond, let's call it that, and you try to discover the true value. How does one go about doing that? You apply to the Federal Reserve for it. There's forms that you can fill in, and you can, once you find the bonds and the serial numbers, you can get it from the Federal Reserve because they have it. And you can then discover the value of your bond? Of course. And the average, let's say, 50-year-old in the, in the United States is, would be worth what? A 50-year-old in the United States, it could be worth hundreds of millions. But one common, if you go on, on the website and you put in your uh, birth certificate number and it comes up only one, you have hundreds of thousands of people are trading on it. Right. That's only one that you know of. I think what I'm getting at is what do you think it would be the median value of the average 50-year-old by the time they turn 50 in the United States? What has been traded? I would say, in NA? I would say maybe a billion, over a billion right. has been traded. Okay. Because when I checked, um, on one of, of my numbers is over 283,000 people are trading on it. Can you imagine how much money that is? So when we hear that the U.S. has a debt of $23 trillion or whatever it is, uh, that fictitious money was all pumped out of the air, but effectively it was discharged against the value of oh, yes. the people. Yes. Right, so that's where the fiction emerges. Yes. And it becomes this huge imbalance that no one quite understands how on earth did we get that much money. They just made it up as they go along and tell us what they want to tell us. Yes, but they'll validate the making up of that money by, yes. on paper, discharging it against the value I of yes. the citizenry. And the citizens' gold, our sovereign gold. We have gold. For every pound that you, you if you weigh eight pounds at birth, you have eight pounds of gold set aside for you. Assigned to you by whom? By the crown. In England? Yes. And in the United States? Yes. By the treasury? Yes. And Be because the United States is owned by, by the, the crown. Let, let's, <laughs> okay. Um, so let's say there's 200 odd nations of the world. There's hundreds and hundreds of small island states. But there's about 200 um, nation states, big nation states. They are all of them a franchise of the Anglo-American Corporation. Yes. Let's call it that. Yes. And that the Anglo-American Corporation is an extension of the British crown. Crown, yes. And the British crown is collateralized by what, or backed by what? Gold. And by the people. The hundreds of millions of people. The British Empire has just went on the ground. It's still there.
controls the Bank of International yes, Settlements, yes. controls all the reserve banks around yes, the world and so yes, on. Right? Yes. Correct, correct. So, so at what point do you believe the world sees through this grotesque fiction and then addresses the source code and then writes it? I think if people get to know what the UCC and the contract law does and their straw, your straw man is your main problem. Once you can control your straw man and it is yours and not theirs anymore, then you're in the right This is path. beautiful what you just said. You're talking about reclaiming the fiction Shin. that yes. was established, yes. the false light. Yes. Reclaiming the false light that was established in your name Yes. Given your identity, so to speak, at birth, yes. without your knowledge, knowledge yes. you're talking about us needing to reclaim that false light and step into ourselves, our true selves, yeah. as a people of the world, yes. in order to reclaim reality from the fiction. Yes. That's powerful. Yes, it is. And that's what I think everyone needs to do. All the sovereign people that's in poverty, and whatever they put us in, that's what we need to do. We need to reclaim that, what they are making money on, that is ours. Then you wouldn't have wars, you wouldn't have people fighting for money, you wouldn't have poor people, everybody will be okay. Everybody. But they do not want you to. If you do that, that will break down their system and they do not want that. So once you know, you need to get into it and you need to start reclaiming your straw man, it is yours.